Warning, this video is for the birds. Hello, my good friends. I just thought I'd warn you. It's all about roosters and chickens and red and yellow and white and a little black. I hope your day has been great and I hope your summer's been wonderful. It is now into September and I really did intend to get this video done uh, probably late August, but I've really not been very motivated. I like my roosters and I like my Pyrex, but cleaning this kitchen, getting it spotless, and trying to eat meals in between, it just seems like I never get there. Very, very frustrating. So I'm sorry to not have a fall video for you yet, but since I had gone to all this work, even though it is now meteorological fall, I still want to do this video and uh, let you see all the fun roosters that I got from my brother that was my mother's and his, and some that I've added along the way. Let's start with the dining room first. I found in my brother's basement a couple of packages, never used, quite small rooster tablecloth. It's really cute. Comes out of the dryer, very, very nice, but it is small. And it only goes exactly to the ends of our table. But it worked cute for this video. I did give away the second one to charity because I didn't need two of them. This polyester is going to last forever. So these are a large pair that I believe were my mother's. They are beautiful. I don't know who made them. They resemble, oh, like Royal Copley type ones, but I honestly don't know. Did not take the time to look it up. It really doesn't matter to me. But the thing that I'm not as crazy about is that they have pink on their heads instead of red. I do like red better. This I found a couple of years at least ago, and it might be a little hard to see, but that is metallic gold speckles on it. It is an adorable little planter that I believe was only like $7 in an antique shop just north of us, but that was quite a few years ago, and I've tended to use it more for Easter time. But then again, at Easter time, I don't really have much black out. So it is kind of odd. It goes with this pair nicely. So I thought it would be fun just to add a couple of little vintage yellow plastic doilies that I believe I purchased from Up Your Alley Vintage in New Richmond, Wisconsin. But they have now closed and they are happily traveling, I'm sure, and Norm and I wish them the best. I know that I've talked about them a lot and how many fun, fun things that we got to purchase from their wonderful, very mid-century modern store. It was great. So I did put on a fall video for you. It is beautiful. I will leave a link to that in the description below. There is music. I'm not sure if this one too had some birds chirping or not. 
Some of them that I was viewing did, but nonetheless, it's, it's a beautiful one with lots of gorgeous fall foliage in the woods and a lot of uh, aerial views like this too. Very beautiful. So I have um, some fun roosters over there too that I think I collected, but we'll go look at another large pair on the top over there from my brother Steve. You're going to get some reflection in my glass cabinet here, glass doors. I showed last year that Norm spray painted five, actually. There's one on top of the refrigerator that's even bigger yet that I had Norm spray paint in red. So these are two pairs that are identical. They were very, very detailed and very, very dull finish. I did not care for all those colors and that flat finish. I wanted to modernize them. They weren't in that great a shape. So I decided to do one pair in red and one pair in yellow. And I did show this in a video at least a year ago or more when I did a rooster theme then too. This is one of my small ice lip pitchers or juice pitchers. It, no, it actually, they're not ice lip. When they're juice pitchers, evidently people didn't put ice cubes in their juice pitchers. But I have it in the um, yellow and red and also in the pink and black and yellow. They're very fun and they're different designs too. So I did use some different tumblers, vintage tumblers that I've had for many, many years to carry on as much of the red and yellow theme as I could. You've seen, if you've watched my previous videos in the dining room, that I did find this adorable teapot. No, I would call that a coffee server. It's taller. In an antique mall north of us again. And I think it was only like $12, something like that. I thought that was really, really a good deal. It's in excellent condition. Now, these roosters are huge. They're planters. They're in beautiful condition. Again, they were my brothers. I love the black feet on them. They are fun fall colors. So it is a hen and a rooster as typical with these sets. So those could have been my mother's too. I'm not positive. It is hard for me to remember way back then. My mother passed away in the year 2000 and my brother has had her collection since then until he did give it to me before he passed away. Over here, I decided to add a very pretty very tall swung vase that has yellow on the bottom and on the top. A gorgeous pattern. I found this in Hutchinson, Minnesota uh, at least a year ago for $9.99. I had my mouth wide open when I saw that and the price. It is quite large. I'm trying to back way up here. That's uh, very difficult because the table is right behind me. I can't back up very far. I found this adorable cookie jar, I believe, at a thrift store. I think it was Bibles for Missions at least two years ago. I still love it. It's probably Taiwan, and I did touch up the red paint on it. It's typical that that's often chipped. And uh, this is a cute little planter. I don't remember where, but most likely an antique mall. 
and I think I did purchase these. I, I can't be positive though. That was probably from my brother's collection. Those may very well have been too. I don't typically buy the colorful roosters. You'll see my favorites are the red and black and white, a little more modern. That's my favorite. So I have a lot of that. I could easily give up the colorful ones like these. I don't know, I just really like a little more modern look in all animals. This one is like California type style. Very beautiful and modern. I love it. Goes very nicely with that little vase. So I thought I would put some faux flowers in there. They're not quite fall yet, but I've always wanted the video to be at the point where it is showing you mostly orange and reds. But of course, wouldn't you know, I'm ending up with it with a lot of blue sky. <laughs> and I just, well, there you go. That's not quite as colorful as some of the scenes in it. They're beautiful. I've had this one for a very, very long time. It was from my brother, a gift years ago. It is possible to find them. I think I saw a set of them just recently. It was probably over Labor Day weekend. I'm sorry for the hose. I did not go out and move it away. The pond is always needing filling. It gets low pretty quick when there's no rain. I have a lot of pinks left. And there is a hibiscus way out there that's new this spring. So it didn't get very tall. It has the dark red leaves. But all of the sedums, the low ones, are all coming out now. I think they're really late coming out in September. I have sunflowers left back there, but we cut down very tall perennials from behind it. As you can see, there's a lot more sedums now. And the grasses are looking very nice. They will get much whiter plumes and they will start turning beautiful red. Every other one and yellow, beautiful golden yellow every other one. So I still have some flax and the middle large section is called hot lips. Oh, a turtle head. That's right. It's called turtle head. It isn't as bright a pink this year for some reason. So there's not a whole lot of fancy flowers to show you this year. I'm just too busy. All this purple stuff came up from seed. All of that salvia, isn't that wonderful? The hummingbirds and bees and butterflies just love it. And it was all for free every year for many years. That's really nice. Don't put any pre-emergent down though, or you won't get them. There's some beautiful color. I'm sure looking forward to seeing gorgeous leaves. I hope we have that in the Twin Cities. But I realize that drought is causing a lot of early color, they say. Over here in the corner on the other side of the patio door is a very fun letter holder, miscellaneous for bills and letters. I've had it for quite a while. And I've had these three, four, for quite a few years too. 
I love them. This one is painted kind of mod. I like that. I love the black highlights. And as I mentioned, I'm the one that was purchasing most of them that you see that are red and black and white. Down here is something that Norm talked me into. This is very unusual. It is not red, black, and white, but it's probably more colors that I like. I did have to repaint the red parts myself, and I didn't realize it after I got it finished that it was a flat paint that I happened to choose. I do use testers little bottles of enamel paint. Norm happened to have some flat ones and that was all I had in the house so I had to wait until he had a chance to go to the hardware store or hobby stores have them too. But this is a salt, large salt. And you can see the S there and a pepper. It's gonna want to go out of focus maybe. A pepper in the back and this is the vinegar bottle you can see the handle and this actually has a cork on it the bottom of it the little feather there so it was in tough shape he spray painted the gold for me the gold wire part it was in rough shape so this is a bottle, separate bottle, as you can see. Every piece is separate. So he thought that was pretty cool. I don't remember how much it was, but it wasn't like a steal. It was a good deal, but not a steal. This is another set that's very common and I'm not as crazy about it. It's much more muted colors and the tops of their head, their um, crown and that, whatever those parts are, I never remember. <laughs> I just can't remember what they're called. Uh, that's the red part on them. So they are pink and this looks like Royal Copley. I found this last year. It's a cookie jar in the crazy, crazy, um, very, I don't know, drippy glaze that you see so many things in. And I have turkeys. I bought a lot of turkeys like this. Um, small ones, big ones. Whenever I find them and if they're in good condition, I get them because I really do like them. They're typically hobbyist pieces, but that was probably like about $9.99, I, I suppose, at the Goodwill. That's about what they charge for that. On this side of the kitchen counter, you can see I am showing you again my favorite blender that was at my brother's house. It's so cool with that starburst on it. I love harvest gold or yellow appliances. And he had this beautiful coffee pot too. And I did mention that in previous videos. This enamel tray I purchased many years ago. And I should mention I've Ended up with a large amount of those Better Homes and Gardens cookbooks from thrift stores. Often found them for a couple dollars or less at Family Pathways. And I happen to have one on blenders recipes. Really fun. I have shown you this crazy calico lucite vintage napkin holder before but he certainly is appropriate for today. This was in my brother's basement. I believe this belonged to my P 
parents. Um, I probably made toast in it myself when I lived at home. Funny, huh? Yep. They probably just gave it to my brother when they got a new one. I found these two adorable tumblers several years ago, probably four years ago. I've never seen them since. Not a one. Don't know why. If I did notice one, it was probably in Red Wing at the Pottery Place Antique Mall. This one has a farm in the back. I have shown them before. And this little picture has little items that you'd see on a farm in the buildings. There's a chicken on the back. And the OM, it took me forever to figure out that what, what that meant. I don't know why. I couldn't imagine and did not think about the fact that it could be Old McDonald. But I believe that's what they're calling it. At first I was thinking it was Oscar Mayer. Who knew? <laughs> it's a cutie. I seen it in a big size too. Now over here, this is very odd to have this wrapped up package here. You can see this is old tissue and old tape. I wanted to show it to you before I open it. I've had it wrapped up for at least a year. I found this mint unused fondue pot for $18 in Hopkins, Minnesota. There is a green one just like it for sale on the internet. Someone is trying to sell the tray alone for $40. Absolutely crazy, huh? So I did not open that just to show you the price tag and the fact that the sterno, is that what you call it? Sterno, sterno, fluid holder is in this package. So I was pretty tickled and I've just not gotten around in at least a year of having this. I just have not gotten around to show it. I didn't plan on it for a holiday video, so. Oh, isn't that pretty? A lot more leaves, big leaves there they were showing. I've had this set for, I think, a couple of decades. Never used it. I've had a couple of fondue pots, but I guess I just kind of gave up on them. Maybe I thought I'll find something cuter someday. But I didn't want to get rid of those forks because I know they're very nice. Um, that reminds me of a sweater. Does that remind you of a sweater? Yeah. Here's one of the Better Homes and Gardens cookbooks that I pulled out to show you that I do happen to have one on fondue. Isn't that fun? So let me open up this package. Well, there are still stickers on it and I was trying to figure out, not being very familiar with these things, that you had to slide it sideways to open it and it was very hard to slide. And I can't believe what's inside. New York, New York. Wow. So there actually is a can in there. Huh, isn't that crazy? Yep. So I think I was very fortunate and the gals in the antique mall that were checking me out with it looked at that, the price, and they said, oh my, is that ever nice. It looks like it's never been used. And I said, yeah, that's what I thought. Yep, they agreed. They thought I got a real deal. 
this is how nice and clean it is inside. I had forgotten to take the lid off because this was inside. Another reason why I think it was never used. You can see the graphics on this are very 60s, 70s. There is someone else I was reading uh, their description of their pot. They were selling just the pot and the tray. They did not show the stand. But what they were saying is it's a Danish, modern Danish design. But it was actually made in the U.S. The back shows it was by U.S. Stamping Company, Moundsville, West Virginia. So this is a very nice little booklet to have. It's called Savory Ware, Porcelain Enamel on Steel. So they're saying it's a non-porous finish. It won't stain, discolor, or absorb odors. Looks like they made a lot of this type of cookware. But what's interesting, the other person selling this on the internet said that it is rare because it was made in the 70s and the plant burned to the ground in the 80s. So I thought you would find this very fun. There's recipes inside here. I think you can tell by looking at the graphics. That it is 70s. Yeah. So that was nice to find inside too. And confirm that it is 70s. And not made in Denmark, but Danish modern style. A month ago, I found this really cute, tiny little drip glaze planter. It's the smallest one I've ever seen. It was in an antique mall south of us, Wasika, Minnesota area. The bottom said... Lane and Company, Van Nuys, California, 1961. I thought it was pretty cute. I have to have the light on my camera here because it's a little too backlit. The sun is out right at the moment. This is my latest purchase. I wish their head red areas were more red. They are quite cranberry. So they're really the darkest of all of the roosters I have. I found this in Minnesota that's just east of Brainerd. It is the Crosby Ironton area where in Crosby there's uh, several antique malls. I think it was like 16 1695. So that was a little splurge for me. But I think the glaze on them is just really neat. Very, very detailed. So I liked them. And this is quite varied in color. It's a little hard to see, but it is an apple. Planter, I found it for one dollar in Hutchinson, Minnesota. I thought it was so cute. So that's what I have in the window. I have never shown this. I've had it for probably, oh, I don't know, 15 years or more. It is plastic. It is an old, old Laundry spring, laundry sprinkler, and what does that say? A lucky wish product. Hmm. Let's see if I can see anything on the bottom. 
It says made in USA. That's all. Yeah. I thought it was adorable. And I do pick up things like that years and years ago when I was making a book on plastics. And I know I haven't shown you anything about my book yet. It's going to be a lot of work. I am working on it. I'm working on the jewelry part. I am working on the jewelry part and purses and other plastic, lucite, vinyl things that I collected for making a book. This is a 1951 Nesco, N-E-S-C-O, uh, set that I bought many years ago. It's really in nice condition, and it is printed on the side, 1951, with the company name. I think these are asters. What do you think? I have not grown asters in years, but... It's the centers of them that makes me think that. And the petals, of course. I don't know for sure. So I just thought I'd show you my most adorable little tiny 1949, maybe. Good housekeeping book that I found many years ago in really nice condition. So tiny. Uh, very old recipes, of course, you can imagine. And those are old Tupperware spoons. I have so many in this drawer right by me here. I have yellow, red, lime green, and orange, and white. I collected a lot of them because <laughs> they were at garage sales. Yeah, it was worth it to me. So that was my mother's mixer, I believe, from many, many years ago. That is an old plastic vintage scoop in there. Two-thirds cup. So it probably is one for flour. It's pretty worn out. Safety wear, it says on the handle. Yeah, it's old, old plastic, so I thought it would be cute in there. And my Popeil's Donut Maker. Five dollars, did I say? I don't know. I can't remember what I spent on that. Um, this was a thrift store find at Bibles for Missions. Little old cranking nut chopper. I just got this. It was at an antique mall. It is part of a canister, and I can't remember how much it was, maybe 12. I didn't mind that it didn't have the lid because I knew I was going to use it for utensils. I just knew that would be so fun. And the bottom says George Z. Lefton. I don't know that there was a date on it. But I do remember that it was left in. So that's pretty cute. A little bit of pinkish on the flowers there, but I thought it was a very nice piece without the lid. And I do see a lot of canisters like that, do you? That's what I think of right away, is a utensil holder. Yep, these poor little old chipped up canisters that nobody wants. <laughs> Down here, I do not know how old this is, but it's in beautiful condition. It is a nicer yellow than this is showing up. Very pale. It's a very buttery yellow color. And those are really bright, bright yellow. So don't know why this is a little paler. It's trying to let more light in. But yeah, I, I don't know the age of some of these enamel pieces, but look at the condition of it. Yeah, very pretty butter yellow. Mm, actually richer, I'd say, than that, than butter even. 
this one's much more yellow. Getting into your golden yellow. This is mural, and I have shown it, and it is darker shaded on the bottom. I could try the flash on here and see what happens, or even the light above the stove. It's a little better yellow. Yeah. I think I purchased these. It does get a little confusing when they're simple ones like this that I like because my brother had so many. And I found these two odd pieces for a few dollars each. I thought that was really a cute creamer. I like old Japan pieces like this and I do love basket weave for some reason. It's just fun. Very fun texture. In thrift stores. Cutest little toothpick holder. This was a bit of a splurge on this set from an antique mall. I believe that was in Elk River. I've always wanted something really nice for this black reticulated metal little old spice shelf. I think that worked out really nice. That's all there was to the whole set. And they're all just beautiful condition. Lucky me. I think the only new recipe box I've added here, I do have a new one that I will show this fall. And along with this one because it's quite rich in color. But I think that's new since my last kitchen video. Very fun one. Yep. But I don't think there's anything else new on here that you haven't seen. This was at my brother's house. It is an egg poacher. It is chrome or stainless. I would say that's probably stainless. It's heavy, really heavy. And I don't know. I should have looked it up. But sometimes, you know, these really, really heavy plastic handles and things, they were calling them Bakelite or Bakelite. But this is what it looks like. It's a poacher with... A uh, glass piece that comes out and the water steams in the bottom. So that's stainless steel. Yeah, I would assume it does come with its cord, of course. But it's, I thought it was kind of cute to show you. And it's called an automatic egg cooker. Have you ever seen one of these, or did you ever use one? I can't tell you the age of it. I think I did look it up at one point. If I have the time, I'll look it up again. This is one of my favorite fun mugs. Whenever I show chickens or Easter. Another couple simple roosters there. I probably bought those years ago since they were just lonely ones, not a pair. They were probably pretty reasonable. And I just found this. It's a salt shaker. Just a simple little salt shaker. I think I purchased two of these. They were only, oh, I don't know, a dollar, a couple dollars each. It's very fun tray with everything imaginable that you'd see on the farm. Oh, there's some good food. Food on the sides, all from our wonderful farmers. Birds. I don't know the age of the tray, but Seems like it would be 
60s maybe. Very fun. Here's some of the uh, fun magnets that I found over the years. This was a fairly new one. Very cute. Ladybug. And all these little flower pots came in a set. I I don't know how much they were, but it was from a thrift store way up north. Okay, now to the pot holders that I picked out. In as much of them as I could find in red and yellow, mostly. What is different is my brother had a bunch of these. He's here, little teapot, copper, painted copper. And they weren't painted real well, just a little bit of copper paint on them. And I have been struggling with these 3M Company command hooks in clear plastic that I had put up here years ago and I got the idea I'm always brainstorming trying to figure out a way to jerry-rig things if I can use that crazy word I thought this is metal and I have very powerful magnets so I have a powerful magnet on the back of this and I put one inside the cupboard because our cupboard inside door here is just thin. These are not fancy cupboards. I would love Norm to paint them sometime, but I don't know. He's not excited about the idea. So I did not have enough of these hooks and I luckily think I had enough magnets to go all the way over here and you'll see I did run out that one is different I can slide them up and down real easily because of the um, the magnets it's not permanent which I thought was great so I did end up with some different designs. My brother had more of them. He had lots of boxes, plastic boxes of little things, doodads for hanging pictures. And these were in them. And <clears throat> I did not do that one up there yet because I still ran out right now. But Norm spray painted all of these for me. So they all match in copper. And what was I going to say about them? Oh, I actually ordered, I think I ordered five on the internet, a pretty good deal, and they said they were vintage. I wouldn't doubt it. So it's kind of fun how that worked out, but I will take down that final one up there. See that all the command hooks were drying up and falling off. And I have not taken this one off yet and they're leaving marks on the wall and this is very old paint so Norm actually went and got me a quart of this color because after many years I still had the paint chip I have many paint chips from some of the walls around here but yeah it's it's frustrating when you can't find one <laughs> you just want to touch up stuff I would attempt to just do this wall I've had too many shelves hanging over there so I need to fix it up so that's gonna be a project when I get time but I'm gonna to have to clean the residue off the wall from that hook way up there they just really leave dried up glue on your wall these are the pot holders that I picked for the fridge. They're very, very pretty. I love the black on them. This black and green edge. 
but I really, really like these with black on them because of my roosters. And so many things in a kitchen that are black, like these. I have gotten a little addicted to those too. So I have quite a collection. I wish I could display them all in one place. So I like those and Norm bought me a new scale. $14. I couldn't believe it. It's in beautiful condition. The other one I have is white. But this one is much more fun for the summer, for Halloween time, fall, whatever. The white one I would use in the winter months because they are very fun to display. And they both were so reasonable. I think the white one was 12. And this is the huge roaster that Norm Spray painted for me. It was monstrous. And like I say, the dull finish, uh, just way too many colors. He was all alone, didn't have a mate, just really boring. I think he's way more fun like that. So up there, I did as much red and yellow and white Pyrex that I could find. A lot of it are gifts from my brother. A lot of my Pyrex and all of the crafts, all those beautiful crafts, as I've told many of you that have watched us from early on. I thank you for subscribing. If you are new, welcome, welcome. It's wonderful to get to know you. Here are the Islip pictures that I picked. Norm spray painted these little flat finished ones that were also my brother's. So spray painted them white for me last year. Oh, that's the big one that matches the one in the cabinet over there, the hutch, the juice one. I love this one. Oh, they're so fun. And this one, I think the uh, geometric ones are my favorite. And I can't tell you how happy I was when Norm finally found our red phone. We did purchase a beige one, but it was push button. This is the bigger old dial one. We have some trim line ones. And I had asked him to put it away somewhere. I don't know if he decided to take it and put it away, but I searched everywhere around the house, everywhere. It just drove me crazy. He tried to look around the house too. We just couldn't find it. So I was complaining again last month, saying, Norm, I, w I wish we could find that red phone. It's got to be around here somewhere. So he decided to go out to the garage and he found it in a cabinet all wrapped up. That's why he didn't see it. And I just did that with something else in the kitchen here. I've been searching all day for that little yellow teapot, the mural one over there. Couldn't find it anywhere. I just made me mad. I knew I had it. He thought I probably got rid of it because I couldn't find it. And I said, no, I like it too much. I would not have given it away. So I finally decided to look one more time way back under the corner cupboards that, you know, is very difficult to get into. We have a light in there, but I didn't look far enough, I guess. Here it was all wrapped up to protect it. That's why I didn't see it. 
Huh, I tell you. I wanted to show you this. I've had it for many years. It's to take to the grocery store. So you can just press down on that little click buttons there and try to add up your grocery bill. Isn't that cute? We've had it for a really long time. Let me see if I can see anything on the back. Um, boy, that's tiny. Made in Hong Kong. Design Rego, R-E-G-O, or registered R-E-G-D. I don't know if that's an O or a D, but I just had to share that with you. I've always thought that was so cute. So I have found some of these over many years. I like that they're stylized. I should show you, I have shown this before. This is a um, mm, cupola uh, for the top of the roof with the rooster weather vane on it, of course. Design and a cute, fancy rooster. All right, cooperate. Very fun design, new last year. My brother gave me two of each of these on each side. He had a lot of yellow Pyrex. I found this adorable uh, set at Bibles for Missions for $2.59. Kobe, K-O-B-E, made in Japan, enamel, little enamel bowl sets. There are many of them that were made in lots of different colors and designs, mostly floral, I'd say, but I couldn't believe this sweet, sweet set for $2.59, and the labels are still on the bottom. I don't think it was used much, maybe a little. I found this one many years ago, many, many years ago. This is one of my newest purchases. They're a little wild looking. The eye is kind of funny. They gave them an awfully big nostril, but I loved how striking they were. I'm trying to remember where did I get those out west of us, and I think it was a uh, $18 set again. Very nice because they're planters. I thought that was really cool. Good size set. And I did repaint the red, but again here all I had was flat red, so I will redo them. Or Norm will spray paint them with a clear coat. We have um, Rust-Oleum clear, crystal clear coat. It works beautifully. So there's the other two. What's on the bottom here is just a variety of my red and yellow bowls that are some Hazel Atlas and some Pyrex and probably somebody else. Not sure. So on this side over here were different black and red and white roosters for the most part. A little bit of green on that guy, a little bit of green on that one. I think that set was my brother's or my mother's. And that picture there. Now up here on both sides, I have a set of six of the cupola design. Uh, they were so reasonable. I think they were like $14 uh, several years ago I found those in uh, Wisconsin. Yeah, I think it was near Hickston. 
Yeah, that was a fortunate find. But because they had black on them, they haven't really gone with anything too summery. You know, like Easter, they don't go. So I have to use them with these black roosters. This is a set, one on each side here. They are identical, a little Japan figurine. It is not a salt and pepper, but I thought they were adorable. Found them in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Big antique mall in La Crosse. I accidentally broke the mate to this one when I was opening up my roosters. It was broken in many, many, many pieces. And I had them packed away in bins, all wrapped up in bubble wrap. Go figure. But they can be brittle, I suppose. It probably just got too much pressure on it from heavier ones on top of it. And the bins are stacked up pretty high. So there's a lot of weight if it was pressed on just hard enough, it must have made it explode. I don't know. I think this is one of the sweetest isolate pictures I have. It just looks so much older. It looks more like a 40s type design to me. Same over here. So I try to, of course, repeat the balance as best as I can. And that's pretty wild, isn't it? Very colorful. It's fun to do all these different themes, color schemes. A lot of fun. And I didn't show you, I have shown this in the thrift haul when I first got it. And I did show it in the previous rooster video, but this was from um, Wisconsin, Superior, Wisconsin, little antique shop. Very cute pattern, very dotted. And it's just a print. Let's see. There is something, though, that I should show you on this side. Crazy. There's one. It's a pom-pom. Let me get to this one. Way over here on the tree. Isn't that cute? They put pom-poms on the tree. Oh, it's really darling. Yep. So... That is the kitchen. Let's go back and see how that video is going. And I'll show you how dark it is getting. It is already 20 to 8. And I'm sure this is a very long video. I hope you don't mind. It's getting a little darker out there. I do have our bright spaghetti light. Lucite spaghetti light on. I don't show you these plates up over here very often. They are the biggest ones, some of the biggest ones I have. Not the huge ones. I have two huge ones over there. I just love them. I never get tired of looking at the milk glass plates. It took, uh, it took a better part of a year to Put all that up. They're not organized like really super space well because I had nails all over the place for birds. I had vintage birds of all kinds on that wall years ago. And I saw this on Pinterest and I wanted to do it as soon as I saw it. I thought, oh, that is just stunning. And I was in love with milk glass. So I can change a lot of those plates to more hearts like that one up there I have several hearts of different sizes and um, the lacy part 
on the edges is kind of different sizes too. And very fancy ones like these that are considered a little more Victorian. This is Niagara Falls. I have shown these before. But if you are new to my channel, maybe you had not seen them yet. I hope you will go back and look at my old videos. I like some of them when they're painted. That's adorable. It's quite small. And I do have a couple of them with yellow flowers on them too. That is a vintage beaded plant hanger. I found that milk glass planter pot and thought it would work real well. So we have crazy lights all through this vine up here for mood lighting. Norm likes mood lighting. He gets a kick out of that. Here's the lights when they're on. It is not dark outside, but I just made it a little darker in here, closing down our blinds. These crazy lights are on a remote, and you can have them do all kinds of blinking if you want, which would be a little nutty <laughs> for what we wanted to use them for. They're fun. So I hope you have a beautiful fall, a very blessed one. Norm and I feel very blessed. We are blessed to have you as friends. So you take care, stay well, be happy, and we'll see you again soon. We can't thank you enough for your wonderful, sweet comments. We enjoy them so much. It's so kind of you to write to us. I wish I could answer each and every one of you. I really do. But I would be on the computer all day long. But I love hearing from you, and I can't tell you how much we appreciate you. So you have a wonderful day. We'll see you soon. Bye now.